Coming up, once tipped as a future Prime Minister, Pretty Patel has become one of the most divisive figures in Westminster after breaches of the ministerial code, allegations of corruption and sleaze, and a reputation for bullying subordinates. There is plenty to suggest that this senior government minister is simply unfit for office. Before we get into it, please give us a like, subscribe and get notified of new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Pretty Patel is back in the news as we just found out that she wrote to Cabinet Office Minister Michael Gove, lobbying him to buy face masks off a company associated with a Tory activist who described Patel as a good friend on his LinkedIn profile. Gove was having none of it and handed the matter on to our incompetent and sleazy Health Secretary Matt Hancock, who responded pointing out to Pretty Patel that the masks weren't actually suitable for NHS use. So why am I bothering to tell you this? Well, because of a legal challenge from the Good Law Project, that amazing independent organisation of activist lawyers trying to hold this government to account, it transpires that two months later, Patel's buddy's company was awarded a contract for £103 million. Let me just remind you of one of the principles of my favourite read, the Ministerial Code. Ministers must ensure that no conflict arises or could reasonably be perceived to arise between their public duties and their private interests, financial or otherwise. This would appear to be yet another flagrant breach of the Ministerial Code and why the Good Law Project has begun legal action over this dodgy £103 million contract, one of many awarded to Tory donors, friends and family by this sleazy government without any competition, using emergency Covid measures as a justification. This dodgy lobbying by Patel comes quickly after last month's news of her £77,000 expenses payment to a company called Beautiful Brows. The Home Office moved incredibly quickly to quash rumours on social media that this was a payment made by Patel for eyebrow shaping and insisted it was for PPE. But questions remain. Why oh why is a payment for PPE being made through a minister's personal expenses account and why, oh why, why on earth was a company called Beautiful Brows being treated as a preferred supplier for PPE? And why, oh why, is Patel's Home Office turning down freedom of information requests about the legal identity and VAT number of this company? Is there some sort of Tory link there? Hopefully, the Good Law Project's legal action will force clarity on this issue. So, we're already well into this video and we've only covered the last couple of weeks. But these recent incidences are only the latest noteworthy events in Patel's colourful career. She worked for the Tory party for five years in the late 90s before working in PR. One of the accounts she worked on for public relations was British American Tobacco, lobbying members of the European Parliament against tobacco regulations. Before moving on to alcoholic drinks company Diageo, working on international public policy issues related to the wider impact of alcohol in society. Ah, <sighs> she must have a heart of gold. She became an MP in 2010, positioning herself on the Thatcherite right wing of the Parliamentary Party and co-authoring the book Britannia Unchained, whose most famous statement was, once they enter the workplace, the British are among the worst idlers in the world and argued for a reduction in the welfare state. In 2015 came the first claims of bullying and harassment against Patel by a subordinate, which led to a settlement of £25,000 of taxpayers' money to keep it out of court. Several sources have made similar claims of bullying and harassment against Patel since that time. Despite this, in 2016 she was appointed International Development Secretary by Theresa May. The following year, while supposedly on holiday, Patel held a dozen unauthorised work meetings in Israel without telling the Foreign Office or her boss, Prime Minister Theresa May. One of those meetings was with Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister. Patel must have known that if this were found out, her boss would have been appalled and baffled by this decision. But she must have felt the risk was worth taking. Following the meetings, Patel is reported to have recommended that the Department for International Development give international aid money to field hospitals run by the Israeli army in the Golan Heights. Israeli officials have refused to identify who they treat in them and whether they are regime forces, rebels 
or civilians. When her meetings came to light, Priti Patel was forced into a public apology for her actions, which was accepted by the Prime Minister. But further revelations of other undisclosed meetings followed, and she was summoned to another audience with the Prime Minister, after which she resigned. Just a reminder of why her position was untenable that passage from the Ministerial Code again. Ministers must ensure that no conflict arises or could reasonably be perceived to arise between their public duties and their private interests, financial or otherwise. Full details of Priti Patel's interests as a pro-Israeli and anti-Palestinian lobbyist can be found on her Wikipedia page. One official who had dealings with Patel while she was heading the Department for International Development said her behaviour there was as bad as the stories say. One minute she would come across rude or ungrateful, and another she would be being dismissive or hostile in the face of advice. It was difficult for the people who experienced it. Another official familiar with Patel's period at DFID backed this up, saying, Many have been traumatised from Patel's time in the department. In contrast, one conservative figure who worked with Patel when she was a junior minister recalled that at the time she was mainly notorious for being very nice, friendly and happy to help. Several Labour MPs have also said she is pleasant and good company, despite her hard right political views. I suppose it's a bit like saying, that Jimmy Savile's a lovely chap, I never saw him shagging any corpses. Despite her reputation as a bully, Patel was appointed by Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson as a very frightening Home Secretary in 2019. Shortly after her appointment, Patel began working for Viasat as a strategic advisor on a salary of £5,000 a month for five hours work a month, without seeking prior approval from the government's advisory committee on business appointments, leading to accusations that she had broken the ministerial code for a second time. In 2020, there was another case of constructive dismissal against Patel by a subordinate. This time, senior civil servant Philip Rutnam, who famously accused her of a vicious and orchestrated briefing campaign of which he was the target. Another financial settlement was made, this time costing taxpayers £370,000. A cabinet office inquiry subsequently found evidence Ms Patel had breached the ministerial code yet again following allegations of bullying in all three government departments in which she had served. It was reported that Patel had not met the requirements of the ministerial code to treat civil servants with consideration and respect. This finding was rejected by Boris Johnson, acting as judge and jury, who said that he retained full confidence in the Pritster. This led to the resignation of Alex Allen, the Prime Minister's chief advisor on the Ministerial Code. But it's Patel's political ideology that makes her a most troubling Home Secretary. At this defining moment in our country's history, I have a particular responsibility when it comes to taking back control. It is to end the free movement of people once and for all. Historic statements on BBC's Question Time in favour of restoration of the death penalty. Voter suppression beliefs like banning prisoner voting. She's also voted against same-sex marriage. She voted for the smoking ban to be overturned and against the introduction of plain packaging for cigarettes. Remnants of her time as a PR advisor for the tobacco industry, perhaps. She has also campaigned against alcohol taxes, again echoing her past career working for Diageo. More recently, she's proposed legislation known as the Police, Crime, Sentencing and Courts Bill, which makes it a crime to take part in a protest or demonstration that causes serious annoyance or inconvenience. Even ex-Tory Prime Minister Theresa May is up in arms about that one, stating, Freedom of speech is an important right in our democracy, and warning that this bill puts that freedom under threat. Rights group Liberty plus Friends of the Earth and 243 other charities, including such radicals as the Ramblers Association and the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, signed a letter warning that the draconian legislation represents an attack on some of the most fundamental rights of citizens, in particular those from marginalised communities. Liberty have in the past stated that Priti Patel is a politician with a consistent record of voting against basic human rights protections. For her to be put in charge of the Home Office is extremely concerning. I couldn't agree more.